Alright, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Dragonite and welcome back to Harvest December. So, in the last part, Shira lost her powers and it started snowing in July because... Don't question these things. And in this part, we're going to see what we can do about getting her powers back. Alright. My head feels heavy. Koha complained as a bird changed, that changed color each time it picked on its feathers sat on his head. It cooed like a pigeon. Think of it as a weight. Are you calling me an airhead? You mean you thought you had substance in there? Koha fell silent. It has been a while since all of us walked to school together. <laughs> Kohai grunted as he stuck his flashcards in his pocket. They look brand new. Mind your own business. For an entire month, Kohai had stopped staring at his, fla at his flashcards. Can I help you with anything? I glanced at Sane. There's nothing you can do. Kohai almost looked her way, almost looked her way, but made an effort to keep looking straight ahead. Walking next to him, Sane was animatedly chatting with Mizuho about some sort of magazine. The two didn't seem to worry about entrance exams, so they were relatively relaxed. Didn't need to worry about entrance exams, whatever. If you want to talk about it, by December. That's all he said. I didn't have a clue what he meant. What did his issue with Sine have to do with December? But I did notice something. I noticed Koha was afraid of December approaching. Mizuho Nene-sama, look, I've won! Madawe pointed out his... Uh, Madawe point, proudly stuck out his wooden popsicle stick. Wow, I didn't know they still did that. Oh. Anyway, it's been a while since I've seen one of those. Is, that if, is everything alright? Why are you asking me that suddenly? You can see I'm completely fine. No, no, I wasn't talking about you, Mizuho. I gestured towards Madoi. Misaki-san, I'm asking whether he needs to return to Sakashima soon. Huh? Oh. I get it now. You want Madoi to leave since he threatens your popularity amongst the female students as the king of cross-dressing. Uh. Yeah, I remember that. That was, um, that was in May that that happened, I believe. That was so calculating of you. you get to gain approval by wearing a short, provocative skirt. I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear this. I don't want to be reminded of the love letters from male juniors I still receive in my locker. I was just teasing you. Well, why do you ask? Mizuho changed the subject easily. I glared at Mizuho, but repeated my question directly to Madoi. Madoi feels fine. Really? That's funny. It's almost time that we sent you back to recharge. Even after getting his powers back, even after giving his powers to Shiro, Madoi had been returning to Sakashima once a month to detoxify. It was a simple act of going home to relax for him, but Mizuho called it recharging. Come to think of it, Madoi feels really energized. This has something to do with Shiro losing her powers, doesn't it? I thought maybe Madoi's powers were lost too, now that Shiro was in her current state. But it seemed that instead, he had regained his powers when Shiro couldn't contain them anymore. Oh, cool, that's what I just said. Um, but I'm glad you're alright, Madui. But, you know but you know things in are abnormal now in Tagami and for Shiro-sama. Do you know anything that may help us? Madui can tell Shiro-sama's powers are weak, but almost, not, but almost non-existent. But Madui doesn't know how to fix the problem. Gruff. And do I want to read that? It's italics. Oh, whatever. And now our god here is just a burden, literally and figuratively. Sorry about that. I hadn't noticed, but a few steps behind us, Shiro had been following with Shiro... The wolf had been following with Shiro on his back. He twisted his lips in a very wry smile, like a human being when we looked at back at him. Kohai looked uncomfortable. Not just him. I was sure we all feel uncomfortable. We all were feeling uncomfortable. The god of Tagami had her silence as she rode on the wolf's back. The god of Tagami kept her silence while she rode on the wolf's back. Shiro had never spoken to his god like that before. I remembered Shiro explaining that the wolf was a complete individual detached from herself. It was, in, it was his awe of Shiro's power that kept him loyal. Now that it was gone, he was behaving irritably. Seeing Shiro look so vulnerable made us uncomfortable. And it annoyed me. Pity was meant for lifeforms below her. This isn't good. We were, look, there were two things we had to consider regarding Shiro's plight. One was to think of how to get her powers back. The second was to think of what to do if all was lost. She couldn't. She would have to live as a human being if she fit. She would have to live as a human being if she failed to regain her powers. However, how many allies does Shirosama have? I muttered under my breath. A god didn't need friends. As long as she had authority, she was capable of living alone. Now she doesn't have any powers. How many people would be there for her? I'm sure you must be thinking about difficult things again. I can't leave her alone like that. I wonder if you would have done the same for me. Yuki's expression didn't change, but I could still she was but I could still tell she was unhappy about it. 
Whoa! Huh? Kohai spun around at Mizuho's yell. A large splash of mud erupted from a rice paddy near us. Ugh. I need to send this for dry cleaning, Sine explained as she pulled her skirt away. She wasn't fast enough. Dive! Woohoo! A small god jumped into the rice paddy again. The hands and legs poking out of the, its kimono were certainly not human. Oh no, it's ruined. Kohai? Don't they have any idea how hard it is to plant rice? Kohai grumbled. He was right. The rice plants were crushed. This can't be allowed to go on. For the people of Tagami, rice farming was a serious business. It was the biggest product they marketed, as, and for Tawada, it was no small matter as well. I want to do it too! Me too! Tiny girls with butterfly wings dived in, following suit. Damn it! Mizuho explained angrily. Someone honked a car horn irritably. Right in the middle of the road was a god in the shape of a crow. A crow. Cow. Same animal, right? It had fallen asleep, calling it, causing a traffic jam. We watched a large nose bubble in a nose bubble expand and shrink from its nose with each, each breath it took. Why is that a thing in, like, Japanese animation? To represent sleeping? I never figured that out myself. Uh, this is annoying as those ding-dong ditch pranks, Mizuho ex ex said exasperatedly. I felt the same way too. We can't let this go on. The minor spirits and gods had gone way too far. I'm sure they weren't malicious and it was just for play. They didn't have any consideration for us people. If they would just listen to what we have to say. But I doubted that. They were so different from us, we could never reach an understanding. Come to think of it, this god we have has caused us a lot of trouble too. Yuki looked back. <laughs> Shira looked away. What was she now? I was surprised at my own thoughts. I was actually disappointed in her. I didn't want to turn I didn't want her to turn human. I wanted her to stay a god. She was so weak. It was irritating. I took a deep breath. The air was humid like summer, but cold like winter. It was disconcerting. Look, it's Kazumi-chan. Mizuho pointed towards a small girl holding a paper bag filled with toys. Hey, please, just once. There was a man standing beside Kazumi begging her for something. We couldn't see his face since his back was turned towards us. Uh, what do you want to photograph me for? You must have lewd intentions. Let's have a small talk somewhere quiet and I'll explain. I've even got sweets for you, see? You think you can trick me with sweets? Slurp. I can eat any I like, but I've been told photographs take away part of your soul. I know, you're trying to weaken me enough so that you can have my way with me once I've lost my strength as a god and we have turned into something less than an animal. No, no, it's alright, it's completely safe. Here, this is my digital camera. Try touching it a little, give it a little touch. Eh! With a swing of Kubikirimaru, Yuki sent the man flying into the rice paddies. Oh, there goes our crops again. You poisonous piece of scum! No, I wasn't- Scumbag! I. The man in question was soon overpowered by Yuki's vigorous Naginata slashing. Whack. 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 Silence. A cool breeze blew by. Uh-oh. Why so surprised? You've been through worse be- You've been through worse beatings than that. I hate the fact that I can't deny that, but... I stepped forward and called out to the man. Dad? What? Yuki turned her head in surprise. That didn't stop her arms from dealing the final blow, though. The Naginata swung down, knocking out my dad, Ta Takaki Kono, out cold. Oops. Dad's last scream echoed through the rice fields. Interesting. I have to assume that his interest in photography was something to do with gods and not, as Mizuho put it, lewd hey. intentions, but... Anyway, how long have I been recording for? Nine minutes. I'm going to end this off here, because it's... I don't know, I'm just going to end this off here. I hope you all enjoyed that. My name is Dragonite, and I will see you all later.